Izanagi considered that his mission to fill the world was accomplished at last. But before leaving for the high plane of heaven, he gave his daughter Amaterasu a beautiful necklace filled with mystical jewels. From that moment on, she would reign over the heavens during the day and illuminate the whole world. Tsukiyomi would take over the night, and as a lunar deity, he would rule the night and the tides. The impetuous Susano received the domain of the seas and storms. The gods recognized how glorious the goddess Amaterasu was, acclaimed as the new lady of the heavenly plains. She stood above the other gods. But Susano was angered to see her sister named the most important deity. Unfazed by it, he started to foster several problems. He made rivers dry, and the green vegetation of the sacred mountains began to dry up and die. Izanagi noticed the chaos his son was creating, and asked why he was acting that way. Susano revealed how frustrated he was at not being given such an important role as his sister. He declared that he no longer wanted to be in this world. He preferred to leave for the kingdom of the dead and stay beside Izanami, his mother. Izanagi was enraged to hear that his son preferred to live in the unclean underworld. The god expelled his son and told him to never return. Before leaving, Susano wanted to make one last visit to his sister. In her heavenly abode, Amaterasu noticed the sound of thunder and an impending storm. She knew that such a thing could only be his impetuous brother. He probably wanted to take her place. Amaterasu tied her hair in two large bunches and assumed her battle position. Upon arriving, Susano was amazed by Amaterasu's imposing and powerful stance. Her sister questioned the reason for the visit, and Susano assured her that he had no bad intentions whatsoever. But Amaterasu didn't trust her brother. To prove that he spoke the truth and that his intentions were pure, Susano gave her his sword. The gods decided to creatively compete. Amaterasu broke Susano's sword into three pieces, and from these pieces, she created three female deities. Susano used Amaterasu's jewelry beads to create five male deities. The impetuous god cherished his victory against the great goddess, since he had created more deities. But the clever Amaterasu contested her brother's victory because he had created life from the goddess's jewels. Therefore, these five deities would be the sons of the luminous deity, and the three female deities born from Susano's sword would be the daughters of his brother. Therefore, she was the actual winner of the clash. Susano was outraged by her sister's interpretation and began to thrash the domains of the solar goddess. The stormy god did all sorts of mischief, destroying the sacred rice fields. He entered his sister's palace and made a huge mess. But the worst was yet to come. In Amaterasu's domains, there was a building in which the sacred weavers wove the god's clothes and cloaks. Susano wanted to scare the weavers. He opened a hole in the roof of the weaver's room and made one of Amaterasu's sacred ponies fall from the sky. The weavers felt so scared that one of them ended up having an accident and dying. Amaterasu, when she saw her fields destroyed, her palace emptied, and even worse, having lost one of her beloved weavers, was taken by a massive wave of sadness. The luminous goddess gave up her tasks, entered a cave, and blocked the entrance with a huge stone. Night took hold of the skies, and sunlight was no more. Both the heavenly plain and the land of men were taken by darkness, and the first winter began. The other gods saw the world wither around them. The vegetation was no longer healthy, the animals began to perish, and evil spirits were on the loose. The deities knew that something needed to be done to get Amaterasu out of her cave. They tried to convince her, but she had made up her mind. The wise god Omoe Kane realized they couldn't get her out by persuasion, but they could by cunning nonetheless. A sacred mirror was devised by the great celestial blacksmith, and a party was arranged in front of the cave's entrance where Amaterasu was hiding. They planted Sasaki, 
the sacred 500 branch tree right in front of the cave exit and hung the beautiful mirror on it. From inside the cave, Amaterasu heard a cock crow. How could it be possible if the world was taken by darkness, she thought. Soon after, she heard drums. There seemed to be a party outside. The goddess was right. Several gods gathered and watched the goddess Ame no Uzume dance. The dancing goddess was attempting striptease, much to the gods' frenzy. They reacted with loud laughter. Amaterasu was captivated by curiosity and wondered how they could be so happy. She decided to open the entrance of the cave, just a bit, to spy what was happening. To her surprise, the gods had found a new goddess of light to worship. She looked so beautiful that Amaterasu decided to leave the cave to see her up close. When Amaterasu came out of her hiding, she brought the light back to the world. The darkness was pushed away, evil beings hid, and joy took over the world. The strong god, Ame no Tajikaro, pushed the stone back to its place, preventing the goddess from returning to the cave. At last, Amaterasu realized that the beautiful bright goddess was her own reflection. She took notice of how splendid and great she was. It wasn't right to deprive the world of her luminousness. The gods cherished the goddess's return, and the world was wrapped in joy. But these same gods didn't forget that Susanoo was the real culprit for that whole conundrum. As punishment, they cut off his beard and pulled out his nails. Finally, they threw him out of the god's house. Susano went down to earth near the river He in the Uzumo province. The stormy god was lonely, and he went down the river on two trunks, looking for someone in that vast world. On the riverbanks, he found an elderly couple alongside a beautiful maiden. They were deeply sad and cried profusely. Susano wanted to know the reason for such dismay. The old man explained that he once had eight daughters, but every year, a massive dragon would appear and take one of his daughters as a tribute. Only one remained. The beast would not take long to return to take his last gem. The god was marveled by the beauty of the old man's daughter and promised to protect her. But he asked the hand of the beautiful young woman to be his wife. The girl's parents were deeply grateful and honored accepting Susanoo's request. The god had a huge challenge, because he wouldn't face some random creature, but the powerful dragon Yamata no Orochi. This was a giant and powerful dragon, with eight heads and eight tails. Even the powerful stormy god would be no match for the dragon if he tried to fight it. Susano did not feel intimidated by the challenge and came up with a strategy to defeat the beast. To protect her beloved, Susano transformed the beautiful Kushina Dahime into a comb and put it on his head to hold his hair. The earth trembled as the giant dragon emerged to claim his tribute. The beast shrieked and demanded his sacrifice. He then noticed that a peasant filled eight barrels with the pure sake. The peasant told the dragon that it was an offering to the glorious creature, who always conquered everything he wanted. Flattered, Yamata no Orochi accepted the offering, and each of his heads consumed a barrel. The dragon got drunk with such a marvelous beverage and fell asleep. Taking advantage of the beast's vulnerability, Susano broke his disguise, drew his sword, and attacked the creature. When the beast awoke, one of its heads was already gone. In rage, the dragon tried to devour Susano. The stormy god dodged his attacks and struck back with lightning and sword blows. Susano was cutting the dragon's heads, one after the other. Without any of his heads, the dragon was defeated, but his body was still fighting. Susano struck a powerful blow, hitting the dragon's tail, but his powerful sword got broken. Inside the monster's tail, there was hidden an invaluable sacred sword known as Kusanagi. Susano, acknowledging the artifact's massive value, knew exactly what to do with it. The god of the seas and storms went to meet Amaterasu. 
the god knelt before the sun goddess and offered her the glorious sword as an apology for every mischief he had caused. Amaterasu, already an unparalleled goddess, became even more splendid when she carried the famous Kusanagi sword. Susano left to meet Kushinada Hime, his new wife. They built a massive palace and had numerous and prosperous offspring. Amaterasu also had a glorious descent. Among them were the men who conquered Japan. They fought in the name of the sun. And with the strong brightness of the goddess on their backs, Amaterasu's descendants subdued their enemies. Jimu, Japan's first emperor, was a direct descendant of the sun goddess and was under her protection. The Yamato dynasty, founded by Jimu, would guide Japan to a story of glory, courage, and pride.